Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and it's tournament time in my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough, second season with the UAB Blazers. And if you haven't been watching, this has been a roller coaster year, but I feel like we finally turned it around. We're going to have the kind of year that I'm hoping is going to satisfy the uh, athletic director and the school. I think this, we're going to meet. I don't know, two or three of the goals they've set for us. And I'm just hoping now that we're in the Conference USA tournament, I'm, I'm just hoping that we can really pick up a win here. I'm not, you know, I, I don't feel like the team's are ready for the Final Four tournament. And as crazy as it seems, I guess I should probably take it if it comes. Uh, but I don't know that this team's ready for it. I don't know if I'm ready for the Final Four tournament yet. Because uh, I feel like if I do that, then I'm probably going to have some unrealistic expectations put on us. I don't think this team is is even maybe a year away from being good enough to, to get a run going. But, you know, hey, it would help our prestige. I'm hoping that if if we do get another win here in this tournament, I'm hoping that we might qualify for some type of... Uh, postseason tournament, whether it's CIT or, or, or another one. I doubt it'll be NIT unless for some reason we just get a good run going and we win two or three. Well, we can't win three. Um, if we win three in this conference tournament, we're going to the Final Four tournament. But this episode, I'm going to go through as much of the tournaments as I can. I know last year I was able to put it into uh, one episode for last season. But we've got to... I don't know how to qualify or uh, to classify this this meeting, but we've got, a, I think, a tough game. Middle Tennessee didn't have as good a year this year as they did last season, but I don't think it's uh, the easiest matchup for us in this opening round. But we have beaten them previously this year. We, we've wound up, too. I, I want to, you know, if, if you have watched the, the previous episodes for this season, it – Again, it was a roller coaster, but I don't think I stressed enough about how good we finished. I mean, we started good. We won seven of nine down the stretch. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not I'm not feeling too bad about the season. I know there was a couple episodes ago. You're probably thinking, man, I, he's ready to quit this game. But, but it, I feel like we were stronger than I gave the team credit for down the stretch, and I'm hoping that's. Uh, going to keep going through um, through at least the first couple games here. But so that's enough of a setup. Let's go ahead and get it started. We're just going to run through the tournament really quick. And then uh, depends on what happens. I mean, if, if we do wind up with a, a good showing here and, and make it to a postseason tournament, we'll probably try to get through their games there too this episode. But here we go. First, well, Texas San Antonio, they lose early to Louisiana Tech. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, they were the winners last season in this uh, conference. They really had a tough year. Uh, but they lost Florida International wins. Rice over Marshall. Uh, I don't know if I would call those upsets. And there we go. Big, easy win, really, over UAB. So it's that 17 wins for us. Um I'm I'm really happy with this season, but now you know we got a tough tough opponent. But let's go back to the box score and see how that turned out. Um, 71-49. I think it, one of my viewers even mentioned it. Our, our defense is where we're really winning consistently. When when we're winning game over game, the streaks that we've had this season, it's when our defense is playing well, and we just shut down their shooting. 28 percent from the floor on 57 attempts. Um, they went to the line quite a bit. We had some foul trouble here as a team, but we out-rebounded them 38-30. to 30. Uh, We shot 45%, and then we went to the, to the line a lot more. You know, I'm liking – I've kind of told a couple of players through the season here, I think, to, uh, or at least one that I know of, to quit shooting those threes. <clears throat> and I'm liking the fact that 
we're not looking at something like this. You know, when we have a, a four for 30 performance like they did, we're going to lose. So even with three pointers, we look good in this game. But it's no surprise to me Dave Horton was player of the game. Another double double for him. Um, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Why decent at center, 9.6 rebounds. Uh, Fisher, not a bad line for him considering how he's played. McCleary, freshman recruit who I've let take over at shoot at uh, shooting guard. Not a great game, but you know good enough. Then off the bench, Stewart Matthews, uh, Daniels even, who was last year's starting center. He regressed quite a bit this year, but he looked good in the, off the bench. Uh, a lot of players here getting some time. Good win, and now we play a tough Southern Mississippi team. Southern Mississippi last year actually made it to the NIT, I think, from this conference, and uh, really went far. Their record 13 and 16 really isn't the full story because they finished uh, 11 and 7 in conference. They must have had a, a really tough record outside of conference, so it's it's not going to be an easy win or easy game for us. I think we played them earlier in the year, no, late in the year, and it was at home, and we we beat them easily. So um, I'm hoping this is good uh, because I thought, for some reason, I thought we were going to be playing Old Dominion next, uh, but it looks like Old Dominion's playing Florida International. Maybe that's because of the way the the uh, games played out. But I think if I'm looking at the conference, um, here we go, the conference matchups we would play the winner that old dominion florida international if we somehow squeak a win out here um but you know i was hoping for one game uh one win in that tournament i like i say i don't know that that's going to get us into the nit it might if it, if it gets us into the nit then we have satisfied i think every requirement that um the AD has for us. So I think that would definitely be considered a success. So big upset here, UTEP out. Um, luckily they're ranked, which will probably help get them into the Final Four tournament, but big upset there. Old Dominion easy, uh, Florida Atlantic. I don't know if that's an upset, but Old Dominion may, may have a good chance of winning this one again. And we're out. So 69-61. Like I say, that record doesn't really show. Uh, Southern Miss is a little bit better than us this season. I'm just hoping that, that that's going to give us enough of a boost to maybe get some uh, postseason uh, recognition, you know, tournament-wise. 69-61. Defensively, I would think that we had a pretty decent game. Uh, held them to 37% shooting. Close on rebounds. We were 12 of 12 from the line. Um, and we shot pretty poorly three-pointers, and our shooting was just not there. Once again, Horton, another double-double. Uh, 11 rebounds, 17 points. This guy, I think, is another thing I would like to, to go through if we have time this episode. I think this guy's going to get some notice on conference teams uh, this year. I, I, I can't imagine he's not going to get something either first or second team because he has been, uh, if you look at his numbers, and especially from power forward, um, I know I haven't done that this episode, but offline I've, I've been looking at some of the stats more in depth, and he is one of the better point power forwards in, in this conference. So I hope that that gives him uh, some recognition. But he was it. He was our offense. Um Man, just really, you know, a couple guys off the bench look good, Martin and Stewart, but Martin's injured a little bit, but he had a decent game. He's a freshman recruit at small forward who I've given not the starting nod, but he he's getting just as much play time as Harris for the most part. Uh, I hate to go out that way. I thought for some reason I was thinking that Old Dominion would be who we would meet next, and I was kind of – counting it out but it, it would have been nice to to get through that one but I tell you there's going to be potentially some shockers out of this conference um, 
in terms of who's going to make that Final Four tournament. Could be Southern Miss. I know, like I say, they got pretty deep into the uh, NIT last year. They had several players who wound up uh, on the conference honors at the end of the year, but they weren't able to pull it out this year. It looks like it's going to be old. Well, where did the... Um, what happened here? Oh, it advanced for some reason. I don't know why I did it, but Rice um, beat Florida Atlantic and Old Dominion easy over Southern Miss, but Rice, I think they're a little bit of a surprise here. Now, they, they beat us early in the season, but yeah, they're 8-10 and 10 in conference. Um, they've really put together a run here. They would be... Uh, definitely a surprise to come out of this conference if if they're able to beat Old Dominion, but I'm thinking that's probably not going to happen. I saw this. I saw it flash up there for a moment, but I wasn't able to see the score. So Old Dominion easily handles them. So two years in a row, they're going to go into the Final Four tournament from this conference. Let's go ahead and finish up the week. Still some, some conferences uh, playing out their games. And uh, like I did last year, I'll probably, once we get into the uh, Final Four tournament, um, I'll take a look. I'll swing back and take a look at some of these conference uh, tournament winners. So that's for the brackets. If we have a scouting report here, that that means... Okay, so we got Cedric Garner. Um, maybe I should have... Maybe I should have pulled that scholarship, but um, you can see he's a one-star. I don't think that's going to mean too much, though. And And I do like, you know... I do like for the the size school that we are and where we are in reputation. I, I do think this um, this is a pretty good recruiting class. And and you see, you know, the guy has good score, and he's a point guard. He has good scoring and handling um, ratings, skill ratings. I think he will give us depth that we're going to need at point guard because. Um, I don't really want to rely on another walk-on like I had to this year. He put up good numbers for the most part in um, high school, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So now what we're going to have to do is I think um, I think we're going to have to go advance. And yeah, we're gonna have to get to that selection show, I think, because now we can't we can't go back. But that's fine. Um, and I'm gonna skip this again just from time. I know it's kind of cool to go through it this way, but um, I'm just gonna skip it so that we were able to get through some some of the tournaments. All right. So again, we did get a final. Uh, we, we are going to be in a postseason tournament, so that's cool. The, the WOL, which um, is actually, and boy, that's a tough matchup, <laughs> North Dakota 2011, but the WOL is actually the CIT, uh, what is it, Col uh, College Invitational. I, don't, I'm, I always get that screwed up. But we are going to be in the... Midwest region, a six seed out of that region, not too high, but hey, I really think that's going to help us uh, satisfy the uh, the college or the school and, and athletic director, and maybe we'll get lucky and get a win. I don't know North Dakota. I can't think what conference they're coming from, but um, hopefully we match up pretty well. Uh, I know you know there's some good. Good programs in here for the most part. You got Georgetown, 
North Carolina. Wow, they must have taken a dive. Uh, you know, Washington, Iowa State, uh, Virginia, Oregon. You know, the, there's not quite the NIT, but there, you know, there, there's nothing really to to feel too bad about to get into that tournament. But I want to look at the Final Four tournament as well but man we got to play our game so our game's going to come up before before those brackets are released um i said i would do that but let's take a look to what at some of the other big tournaments uh how they finished up so you got duke coming out of the acc um some shockers there pittsburgh was ranked high north carolina state went out early they were the second seed um uh, big east butler who is having a great year. They they were ranked first the last uh, ratings I saw. They beat out Villanova. Uh, Big Ten, Penn State, still struggling. Still still way down there. They're knocked out early by Nebraska. Uh, you got Air Tournament. Big 12, Kansas, easy over Oklahoma. Kansas just a, a dominating team throughout eight seasons now that I've been playing this uh the series who else do we want to look at um OVC looks like Eastern Kentucky over Belmont that's a, kind of a surprise uh, our old team Austin P didn't even make the tournament they they I think uh, they take the first 12 has it one two three four five six there are 10 I guess out of that conference so not everyone is uh, comes from that conference into the tournament Pac-12 went to Southern California over Arizona and then SEC you got Kentucky low scoring game lose to Arkansas Arkansas is another team that's really been dominant in this playthrough um, and I'm going to do this one more time I, I I confused this final, you know, big, the West Coast Conference. I forget who's in there. Brigham Young holds holds strong and beats out Gonzaga. If you look at the polls, um, so we got Kansas now first, but Butler, Butler up there. Um, chance to really, you know, finish undefeated. I don't, they're the only team I'm seeing here undefeated. But you got some some old Big Ten teams um, still in there. Great conference. Some SEC teams. Uh, Gonzaga bouncing back. I don't really see the North Carolina. I'm not seeing up, up there. Um, I know that they're in the they're going to be in that CIT tournament that that our team's in. But I haven't really paid much attention to them. I don't know if they're really having a a tough time of it through these playthroughs or not but yeah come to think of it I don't know that I've seen their name uh, in a lot of these final four tournaments and then we're not going to see the bubble watch here but let's just go get through our first game here with North Dakota and I think if I look at the grid for them for this one I'm going to You know, just hope that we have a good showing. If I, I'm just gonna look at where North Dakota is. Looks like they're in the Summit League. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really all that familiar familiar with this one. I think Denver. I've seen their name a few times. Pretty Fort Wayne, maybe Oral Roberts, but um, I'm surprised they must not have won their their tournament. Obviously, even though they came out with the best record, kind of like UTEP here. But um, Conference-wise, I think the matchup should be good, but 
No, can't do it. 82 to 58. Um, they're just, a, I guess, just a better team than we were. I will say, though, I couldn't ask for much more than, than to get enough recognition to go to a postseason tournament. A double-double here from Horton. Three in a row for what it's worth. He only had 10 points, but, you know, he's he is the man on this team right now. Matthew's coming off the bench. You know, I don't know what to do with this guy. He's he's a junior. He's a senior next year. I don't think he's all that concerned about playtime. Yeah, he's not. So I think he's just a really good bench option. You know, it, right now with no depth at power forward, that's where I've been playing him off the bench. So he gets maybe a little bit of time there and at center. So I can't really complain about his play. He's had some good games off the bench. Martin small forward. I'm hoping he developed some ratings a little bit with the playtime he got. Same with McCleary, even though he had a poor game here. Um, I moved him to shooting guard starting several games ago, and we we were winning, you know, for the most part. I know we've won these last, lost these last two, but that was against better opponents in these tournaments, but I'm hoping he also gets some ratings boost. It was, this game though, it was definitely Poor shooting for us, good shooting for them. They went to the free throw line quite a bit better. Our free throw shooting was, uh, or they went to the line more, a little bit more anyway, and their their free throw shooting was better. We lost a 24, though. Uh, we're not going to catch them there. It was just uh, just a, probably their outside game a lot better than ours, and that's how they won it. So I'm just going to switch over then to the Final Four tournament and probably at this point, yeah, Tuesday, we're going to get through the playing games. We'll look at the brackets and move ahead. So we got Butler first in the Greensboro region, Bucknell, Tennessee, uh, South Carolina State, Villanova fourth in this one, Alabama second. Oklahoma, Boston College, third. Could be a pretty competitive region there. Milwaukee, region Kansas, first. No surprise there. Missouri, Mount St. Mary's, um, who we played earlier in the year, I believe, and won against. They're, they're in this bracket. Southern California, fifth, uh, even though they won the Pac-12. Brigham Young, second. Michigan, Iowa, playing early. Uh, two Big Ten matchups early in this one. Tampa region, Arkansas first. Uh, Gonzaga fifth. I'm not seeing Old Dominion. They're 11th in this region. Duke third. I'm not seeing if, if UTEP made it. So we got one more region, Boise. You got Michigan State first here. Miami fourth. Uh, yeah, so that was it. Kentucky third in this region. So looks like um, just the one team. So UTEP kind of blew it for themselves, losing that that conference game, conference tournament game, because now they're not in the in the uh, in the tournament. That's how hard it is to make, you know. Unless they they were in a playing game. No, I, I take it back. They're seventh in the Milwaukee region. So we did have two teams from Conference USA. Um, that's, you know, that's one of the things, one of the, the considerations I had when I went to this conference, you know, considering where I'd been, I do think it's a step up from OVC. So, you know, we have a good season. If we don't make, if we get to a point where we're winning 20 plus games a year and the competition's pretty decent, I don't think you have to make, you know, you don't have to win the tournament in that conference necessarily to make the final four. And that's what, uh, that was what I was hoping for. And looks like that's the case. So now we're ready to, to start the games. I remember last season, depends on how you look at it. It's either boring or, or a good, tournament just about every bracket 
was one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, six, or one, two, three, five. I think the highest, lowest seed um, to make the Sweet 16 was eight or something like that. It was, it was not a year for Cinderella's. And you can see here in this Greenboro, Greenboro, Greensboro region, Butler wins. Um, Villanova, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No upsets whatsoever coming out of this region. In Milwaukee, Kansas, uh, we do finally have an upset. Northern Iowa beats Southern California, kind of close. Uh, Brigham Young wins easy. Texas El Paso's out, so the Conference USA is uh, not going to be well represented there. They should have won that one, actually. That's two upsets out of this one. You got a 12 and a 10 C, but Kansas has got to be loving that. I mean, that's uh, it's got to be a good sign for them or their chances. So now we move on to the next day, and we've got out of this Tampa region, Arkansas easy win, Gonzaga, Connecticut once again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No upsets whatsoever. Old Dominion's out. So Conference USA, even though I was talking them up there, two teams make the tournament, but both teams are out first matchup. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, we have a few upsets, quite a few upsets here in the Boise region. So this is going to be the one. Michigan State, the number one seed, they easily win. Uh, but Wichita State in a close one, nine over eight. They win by three against Marquette. But South Alabama, uh, 12 seed, they're, they're in. The biggest one here, though, is Princeton. Fif 15 seed, they beat San Diego State. And then Oklahoma State, a 10 seed, beats Kansas State. So one, three, four, six, nine, ten, twelve. This is definitely where the Cinderella's are going to come from if, if somebody can get past Michigan State. So now we'll move ahead to Saturday's games. Another potential upset right here, Northern Iowa over North Carolina State. Uh, I, I can't remember if North Carolina State, I don't think they won the championship. I, I think Duke won the uh, ACC, but I believe it was against North Carolina State. So Greensboro Region, Butler, easy over Tennessee. Um, Villanova, easy over St. Mary's. So you got one, two, three, four out of this region. No shockers. A very close game, though, between Boston College and Notre Dame. Milwaukee, you got Kansas Easy Northern Iowa. This is the upset, 90 to 78. So you got one, two, three, 12 out of this region. Brigham Young easy win. Michigan loses to Pittsburgh. Tampa region, moving ahead. Already, I'm liking the uh, results here better than last year. I, I don't like unless it's my team who's got those high seeds. I really don't like a, you know, the, I don't like a tournament without some upsets late. And now we've got the Sweet 16 decided. We've got Arkansas, easy. Uh, Gonzaga, easy over Connecticut. Arizona, Maryland. Maryland over Duke. So that would be a pretty nice upset. I, um, I'm i thinking I'll, I'll look at Boise. Uh, yeah, we're, Big Ten, they're always represented in these Final Fours. You know, uh, this one, Oklahoma State, it was going to be a Cinderella out of that one because of the matchups, but uh, they they beat out Princeton, so they're currently, I think, the lowest rated, lowest seeded team, or highest seeded, however you want to look at it. Nope, Northern Iowa, they're they're the Cinderella, but uh, you got Michigan State, Miami, Kentucky, Oklahoma State. For the most part, everything's fallen into place, but you got a couple, you know. A couple Cinderella's, but I don't see Northern Iowa beating Kansas. You know, Oklahoma State might get lucky. I mean, that's a, that could be a good matchup. So let's uh, move ahead. North Dakota's still winning there, by the way. I'll, I'll take a look at those tournaments, too, when we're done. Uh, so we got to get back to, I think, Thursdays again. All right.
right, so here we go. Uh, Butler Villanova. This could be a tough one. Butler's still undefeated. That would be kind of nice to see. Villanova won the tournament last year. Uh, Brigham Young's still in there. They're 34 and 1. So you got Butler easily over Villanova. So that was a big win. Alabama, 97 to 90. That's going to be a good matchup. Milwaukee region, Kansas, easy over Northern Iowa. Brigham Young. So you got 1 and 2, 1 and 2 and from both of those regions. Now the Tampa, uh, which I guess, you know, you could, you could probably chalk that up to say, hey, the, the, the AI is doing a good job seeding these tournaments. So, you know, I guess that's one way of looking at it. So out of Tampa, Arkansas, Arizona, seeing a lot of these same teams year after year. And then Miami, uh, big upset, 87-85. That looked like that was a great game. They're going to face Kentucky. So, so if looking at it from that perspective, I mean, that's, you know, three of four. Um, not quite the Cinderella that I would like, but if you look at it now, the, the Elite Eight, you got Butler, Alabama, Kansas, Brigham Young, Arizona, Arkansas. So you got three teams out of the, the SEC. Um, that's, I guess, they're the conference to, for this year. So first games, Kansas back in the Final Four. They easily beat Brigham Young. And Butler still undefeated. An easy win for them, man. Butler has really not had any trouble throughout this whole bracket. They easily get through it. I guess Kansas same way. I mean, 13, 23 point win, 15 point win, 21. I mean, they they that was a good Brigham Young team they beat. So now we're moving ahead. So Arkansas, Arizona. I'm going to say Arkansas just based on the way that was going. Hey, Miami, they're, they are officially the Cinderella of this uh, Final Four. Arkansas loses to Arizona, and Kentucky loses to Miami. So SEC puts three teams in the final, Elite Eight, and none of them get through it. So... Pretty crazy. Um, so we got. Oh, we got to go through a few more days here. I wish you wouldn't bounce from that. I don't want to go through the week here because uh, if I go through the week, I think it'll get through them really quick. North Carolina was still playing in that their tournament. So one more day. <clears throat> so here we go. Butler, Kansas. Um, I don't know. If Butler prevails here. They may they may have a really good shot. And it flipped by too quick. I didn't see it. But we got Arizona. Uh, Getting past Miami, but Miami definitely had a good run here. I'm hoping to see this UAB team somewhere in that mix in, in a couple seasons. So who's it going to be? It's going to be Kansas. Butler couldn't do it. So Butler, yet another team undefeated, gets almost as far as you can go and, and loses late. So Kansas, Arizona... Great matchup, one and two in terms of the seedings. Uh, I forget who was number one out of that that bracket. And it's going to be Kansas. 40 and one, uh, just like Villanova last year. I think Villanova beat Kansas. I can't remember, but uh, Kansas is just having a great run in this tournament. So 82-64, that was a good one. 
And now we got some award winners. I want to go through that too. Um, why not? There's no more games. But um, let's take a look at the tournaments real quick. So WOL, North Dakota, played pretty well. I mean, they um, out of the East region, you got North Carolina winning over Florida A&M. Again, you know, some pretty good programs here. They had to beat Georgetown to get there. Midwest, where we were, North Dakota made it all the way to the final and won. So they won out of this uh, – out of that bracket, South Region, Oregon over Weber State. And I don't, like I say, I don't think there was any other Conference USA teams here. West Region, St. Joseph's. Um, pretty sure, yeah, we were the only uh, Conference USA team. And then finals, it went North Carolina. Oregon and Oregon wins. So that was um, a pretty good tournament there. And then in the CHI tournament, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, sorry, but so Southern Illinois. I'm not seeing West Virginia came out of this one. I didn't see any of our teams, uh, any Conference USA, but this one went to West Virginia. Uh, good program again. And then the NIT, this is where we might have another team or two showing up. Um, so Vanderbilt, UCLA, I mean, Texas, you're going to see some program. good Cincinnati, you're going to see some good programs here. Uh, Belmont from the OVC, they were always strong in the OVC. I'm still not... Uh, Wow. So there, we were the only other team to make a postseason tournament outside of UTEP and uh, U Texas El Paso and Old Dominion. So just, just the three of us. And the finals here at the NIT, Liberty over Buffalo. Kind of a surprise. Belmont went pretty far. But let's go ahead and advance and look at the postseason awards from our conference. Uh, I'm hoping, like I say, that we get some notice here. This would be nice to see if we do. All right, so let's let's go to it. Um, I want to look at the Conference USA and individually, Bill Johnson, Player of the Year. It's, like I say, Southern Miss. This they have some good players. Bill Johnson, I, still just a junior. Um, they they may be tough to beat again next year. Defensive Player of the Year, uh, senior Chiron Jackson. Uh, not sure why he was defensive player, but okay. Freshman of the Year out of Louisiana Tech. He did have a, uh, a center there. He did have a good a good season. Coach of the Year, Danny Mance from UTEP, and then first team All Conference. Dave Horton, he, he, he is there for the uh, Ford. Glad to see that. I can't, you know, I, I think you have to go back to some of those early seasons with Austin P before I had a player show up in the uh, all-conference teams. Great job. I, I think he might even, he may show up again there next year. Um, Hopefully, I think they've already declared. We've gotten past declaring for the draft. Uh, that would kill us if this guy declares early. Uh, but we got Western Kentucky, Texas, San Antonio. Again, Bill Johnson, center. And then second team, a couple guys from Old Dominion and Ryan Y. So um, good job. I mean, we got two guys getting some recognition. And he's just a sophomore. Uh, he should hopefully be back again next year improve on the season that he had. I'm kind of surprised that he had as good of a season as he did because he was, um, if you got to see last season, I, I made him the starter when, um, gosh, Daniels, I think, was who I was going with last year at center. And he just didn't look as sharp defensively. And so he really upped his game. You can see the ratings progression. He ticked up 
at least a point in a lot of uh, a lot of categories, especially rebounding. If he does that again next year, he could be uh, him and Horton again could really carry us pretty far. So, in terms of, uh, I'll look at Big Ten just for the heck of it. We'll go individual awards. We got Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State Coach of the Year. Any Penn State team players here? What what are the odds? And we don't see any. Freshman of the year was at Michigan Center. Centers get uh, a lot of awards, I've, I've noticed. And then OBC, just just because I got the uh, I got that connection. So Tom Hall, uh, player of the year. It seems like. No, no, he. I can't. God, duh. It's been way too long for us to have remembered some of these guys, but he's a center, and he was player of the year there from the OBC first team. Any Austin P guys? Nope. Uh, that team's in a pretty rough spot, I think. So that's gonna do it for for this episode. Um, we're gonna go to the off season, get ready for next year. I think. I just, I really think there's going to be some positives uh, to look at from from this season. Just the way we started, the way we finished. Hopefully, you know, giving a lot of these younger guys playtime this year is going to help us see some uh, improvement in ratings. And, you know, we might, I might be able to say that we'll have a better team next year because the guys that were losing really, the seniors come coming falling off this team they uh, they really didn't didn't really uh, contribute too much to be honest I think a small forward you know he was really terrible shooting guard I benched him at the end of the season so I, I think um, I really think we're, we're potentially in a good spot anyway um, so last thing I didn't know it was going to come up this soon but Let's look at the season review. Um, so we didn't we didn't qualify for the for the NIT tournament, but here we go. Didn't finish last in conference. We succeeded. Finished above five hundred. Succeeded. Uh, can't ask much more than that. Improved school prestige finally. So um, I don't know if we'll tick up. I think we're still at two stars, but. We're on the right track, and I think with job security, um, that's going to get us back to 100. Which you know, Penn State. If you if you got a chance to see me on that one, I was 20 um, percent or so at that last season. There was no question I was going to get fired. So I think we're going to have the time with this program now. That's what I was hoping for. It, it may not happen next season, but I think you know, I'm going to stay with this one until until we start start getting 21 seasons regularly and you know NIT and and final four tournaments you know year to year that's what I want to achieve here but as always I appreciate the support the likes the comments uh, finally top 300 subscribers which I'm pretty proud of wouldn't mind getting higher but you know um, I appreciate every every subscriber I got so thanks for your support and I will see you next episode when we get ready for year three at UAB. Thanks.